Hello, my name is Keshwani. <coughs> That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problems 109 and 110. Problem number 109, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it. It says 27 times a certain number exceeds 100. 27 times a certain number exceeds 100 by as much as 60 exceeds 13 times the number. Our job is to find it. So let's take a look at it. 27 times a certain number exceeds 100. So we, here we go. 27. 27 times certain number, let's call it x, 27 times a certain number exceeds 100 by how much? How would we find it? As always, think of this 27, time, 27 times x here, this quantity here, think of this as a number. Pretend that this is, pretend that this number, pretend that this is some number more than 100. Let's, let's pretend it's 103. So if somebody were to ask us 103 exceeds 100 by how much? What would we say? 103 exceeds 100 by 3. How do we find 3? It's simply 103 minus 100. If somebody asks us 160 exceeds 100 by how much? 160 exceeds 100 by 60. So it's simply 20 times 7, 27, 20, 27 times 27 times x rather is what I meant to say, 27 times x which is the 27 times a certain number, this quantity exceeds 100 by simply 27x minus 100. That's how much, that's how much it exceeds, the difference between the two. The second part is 60 exceeds 13 times the number, 60 exceeds 13 times the number, 13x by how much? Again, think of some number here. Instead of 13x, think of think of this as a, as a number here, less than 60. So if somebody were ask, if somebody were to ask us, 60 exceeds 57 by how much? 60 exceeds 57 by how much? The answer, of course, is 3. How do we find 3? It's simply 60 minus 57. If somebody asks us, 60 exceeds 60 exceeds 20 by how much? Well, 60 exceeds 20 by 40. How do we find 40? 60 minus 20. Similarly, 60 exceeds 13 times x, this quantity, by 60 minus 13x. That's it. That's the part that we have to understand. The rest is easy. And now we are told that they, these, these, are, these quantities are equal. 27 exceeds 100 by this much quantity, which is as much as the quantity by which 60 exceeds 13x. In other words, this quantity equals that quantity. That's all. That's, the rest is very simple. 27x minus 100 has to equal 60 minus 13x. And now it's a very simple linear equation. There's nothing to it. Let's bring the 13x to this side. Let's add 13x to both sides. The rest is very straightforward. Bring the 100 to that side by adding 100 to both sides. 100s are going to drop out. 13x and, 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 and 27x will be 40x equals 60 plus 100 is 160 and 13x cancels out 40x equals 160 that implies that x must equal 4 x must equal 4 are we done yet no not quite the last thing we have to do is verify our answer so that's what that's what we're going to do on the top we're going to do the verification on the top as we always do it only takes it only takes a couple of seconds and it's worth spending that one amount of time to verify our work. So, the, your, what we are claiming is that x equals 4. And therefore, the problem tells us that 27 times 4, 27 times 4 is how much? How do I, how do I know? I know 25 times 4. 25 times 4 is 100. If 25 times 4 is 100, 27 times 4, which is only 2 more than, 20, 27 is only 2 more than 25, so it's got to be 8 more. So it's 108. And how much how much does this quantity exceeds 100? This quantity we just found out is 108. 108 exceeds 100 by 108 minus 100 or 8. 
60x is 13x by how much? 13x, 13 times 4. 13 times 4 is 26. Uh, you, double the, uh, you double the 13, you get 26, and you double the 26, you get 52. And 60 exceeds 52. 60 exceeds 52 by how much? 60. 60 exceeds 52 by 8. There you go. They, they are the same quantity. Our answer is correct. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. We are told that the sum of the two numbers is 20. This is 110. We are told that the sum of two numbers is 20. We are told, we are further told that if 110 is added to, if 110 is added to One of them, the result is nine times the other. Our job is to find these two numbers, find them. We are told that the sum of two numbers is 20. So let one of them be x. So we have two numbers and they add up to 20. So if we have two numbers, if we let one of them be x here, so if we're going to pretend that one of them is x, what do you suppose is the other one? For example, if we have two numbers whose sum, whose sum is 3, and one of them happens to be, whose sum is 20 rather, if we have two numbers whose sum is 20, and if we let one of them to be 3, what do you suppose the other one would be? If one of them is 3, the other one would have to be 17. How do we get 17? 20 minus 3. If, if the sum of the two numbers is 20, and if we pretend that one of those numbers is 5, the other one would have to be 15. How do we get 15? 20 minus 5. Similarly, if one of the numbers is x, the other one would have to be 20 minus x. We are further told that if we were to add 110 to one of them, if we were to add 110 to one of them, so let's add 110 to this guy here, what happens? The result is 9 times the other. The result that we get here, which is going to be x plus 110, x plus 110, is going to be 9 times the other. 9 times this other guy right here, 20 minus x. That's it. That's all it is. That's how simple it is. All we have to do is solve for x then. Let's do it then. 9 times 20 is 180. 9 times x is going to be 9x. And here we have x plus 110. Instead of bringing, let's bring the 9x here. And let's take 110 to the side. 9x is going to drop out. We get 10x equals, this 110 is going to drop out. 180 minus 110 is going to be 70. And therefore, x equals 7. If x equals 7, that means the other number must be, the, which is x minus 20, which is 20 minus x rather which is 20 minus x, the other must be, the other must be 13. The question that comes to mind at this point, the question that comes to mind at this point, is that we are told, that we were told rather, past tense, we were told that if, one, if we were to add 110 to one of them, the result is 9 times the other. How did, how do we know that we were supposed to add 110 to this guy and not that guy? How do we know where to add 110? It says if 110 is added to one of them, the result is 9 times the other. Why not add 110 to this guy? What would have happened? Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. So here we go. 20 is a... Let's, let's erase this part. Find them business. So 20 is the total. 20 is the sum, one number is x, if we're going to pretend that one number is, let's, let's do it in a different variable so that we don't confuse the two here. If one number is y, the other one is going to be 20 minus, actually, that's the whole point, we want to see that it doesn't matter, 
the juxtaposition is there just to just to show that uh, it doesn't matter whether we add one if we had 110 to this guy or that guy it wouldn't have mattered let's find out here so instead of adding 110 to this guy it says if 110 is added to one of them so these are the two numbers x and 20 minus x let's add 110 to this guy if we add 110 to this guy what we end up is is 130 minus x and we are told that if we do that if 110 is added to one of them the result is 9 times the other. This quantity that we see there happens to be 9 times the other. That's what it is. Bring the x to this side and we find that 10x equals 130 and therefore x equals 13 and if x equals 13 that means the other number must be 7. Of course x will equal 13 here not 7. x will equal 13 here not 7 because the way we set it up here the 110 is added to one of those numbers, or one of those numbers here is this 13 here. We have, this is the mirror image of each other. It's the one and the same thing, except here we're defining other as the bigger quantity. Not the 7, but the 13. Bye now.